look at what we have here. Another BMW, yes. This time it's the M2 competition. And this is also a Tri Industries fundraiser car, which we'll get into in a bit. In this lovely lingerie blue metallic, there's so much to like and to dislike, but let's get into it. Now it's time to talk about Tri Industries, a local non-for-profit organization in the Northern Illinois area, whose mission is to employ people of severe disabilities and disabled veterans in hopes to help rehabilitate them, to give them a place to come to work free of discrimination. I've talked to the people that have worked there. I've worked with those who run this business. And one of the big challenges with a non-for-profit is revenue, of course. And they've come up with a creative way as car enthusiasts to purchase vehicles and to raffle them off. And I'm here to try to help showcase the M2 competition. If you want to support their mission, donate to them to potentially win this. If not, watch the video and enjoy. Thank you for your support. I feel as though I'm treated as an employee because they understand that just because you have a disability doesn't mean you can be you disabled, that you can't do anything. And here's something that we can do if we put our mind to it and work hard and strive for the best. Your support of Tri Industries is not just about creating jobs. It's about creating hope. It's about creating new opportunities and new directions. And it's about giving people a place to go where they know they fit in and they know they're wanted. All right. The competition interior space. Yes, this is a two series. Yes, it's been tarted up to become a sports car. And when I look at this cabin, I think, well, there's a lot of good things about it. There's simplicity for one. Most of the physical controls are stupid intuitive. Your HVAC controls, your seat heater traction control button, even your light switches are not confusing. And then I think to myself, well, I'm spending $63,000 on this car, and it feels like something I'd get in the $20,000 price range. I know, yes, there's carbon accents in here because that's what we need, but it just, it feels very low rent for the price. So I'm hoping that they're going to make up for some of this in other ways. Now, I know some people are going to get bent out of shape about me calling this a chintzy interior space. And the truth is, if you're buying an M2 competition, you don't care about the luxury options that BMW are putting in their M5 or their, their M8 or whatever. You want a more back to basics approach. So there's not padding on the door panels and the cup holders. There's not the fragrance dispenser that blows Axe body spray all over you and poisons you. No, they focused on the things that you want from a driving experience. The thick and meaty steering wheel. The paddles feel solid and they don't feel like they're gonna break off when you click them. The sill space is wide enough to accommodate a water, wider body type. Your passenger is going to feel comfortable in here. You can drive this every day with just enough luxury amenities that you're going to appreciate while still shrinking down the cabin to feel connected to the car. I never felt like I was driving a boat. I never felt like I was driving something I didn't have complete and utter control of. And you feel a better connection with this BMW than you have in pretty much any car in recent history. 
All right, let's talk about the other nuances like the M mode buttons on the left side of the steering wheel. If you have two drivers, for example, you have M mode one and you go in the infotainment, you set everything the way you want it, everything off. And when you get on the street, you hit it twice, you pull out of a parking lot flat out, you spin this thing into a curb, you can do that. If you're a softer driver or you want a more leisurely experience getting your curly fries in the Arby's drive-thru, you set M mode button two with everything on. It allows you that flexibility, but everything else is standard. Standard BMW stuff that you've seen forever. iDrive modes, the infotainment, the horrible Harman Kardon sound system that sounds like they ripped it out of the Daewoo Laganza. Everything you've expected in the past is still here. Enough of that, let's get into the shop and talk turkey about the technical aspects of the M2 competition. We are under the brand new BMW M2 competition. This is supplied to us from Tri Industry, so that means it's not a part of a press fleet. It's never been molested, curbed, driven light by an angry journalist, so it really is a new car. And better yet, it's been ramped by Chicago Auto Pros and paint corrected. That's right. So you have paint protection film on the front, which is perfect for when I decide to drive you over. The blood will come off way easier. <laughs> so the M2 competition has replaced the M2. And that's for a variety of reasons, but primarily emissions. Okay. And what do we get with the M2 competition? Why is everybody all hot and bothered over this? A faster motor, bigger brakes, different suspension tuning. That's really it, actually. Okay. <laughs> so when you look at the underbody of this, you're going to see a few things. You're going to see the M-specific lower suspension and upper suspension pieces with M stampings on them. They've changed lower control arms. They've changed... in this case, you have aluminum shock bodies, which is kind of the M standard thing, the bigger brakes, and of course, you have the cooling ducts and more airflow for the coolers that they add here. An oil cooler as well, which is huge. Yes, it is pretty big. And you need it. If you're driving hard, which obviously BMW expects that you're going to be driving this a little bit harder, so you don't want to have any heat issues. You have an aluminum, a very hardcore aluminum skid plate. This, uh, you can definitely take bottoming this out. It actually has a jack point on it as well. And then you have uh, an up kick or a kick up here for transmission cooling in the aero panel or NVH panels that they put under here. Now, I think it's best to go in the back and talk about some of the changes there. All right. We've made it to the rear of the M2 competition. All right, tell me, what did they do? So as I mentioned earlier, they made some changes from the M2, past just the more high performance motor. They've added larger brakes, so you now have six piston fronts, and larger rear brakes as well. So now you have four piston uh, rears, going from a two piston and a four piston respectively. They've also changed the dampening range to deal with the higher horsepower, and they've recalibrated the MDM mode to allow for more wheel slip. So you can really monkey this thing around if you want. Well, that's good too, because Obviously, if you're going to go turn the, the, all the stability control off on this car, it's very, it's very, it's a sideways car. So having that MDM mode give you more slip while still giving you a safety not as good for some drivers, especially on the street. So the other thing that they did here, and this is typical of when you try to make an affordable sports car, is they have to reutilize some things that they already have. Like the control arms here, the lower control arms, the M control arms are borrowed off the M3, M4. Now the thing is, the arc or the platform here is slightly different, so they have to create. They created a new subframe assembly in order to fit these new control arms. And you know, you can take a look at this compared to the regular two series, and it's much different. You know, and then there's other things like the exhaust tuning. This thing burbles and farts. And one of the big complaints about it is, you know, BMW is good about designing their mufflers to help flow air smoothly out the back, which this is another design. But when you have these black or black chrome exhaust tips and you have this ugly ass silver muffler that hangs down. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It doesn't. Just why not coat it black or something? It does know? sound ridiculous, though. It does sound good for this type of motor, for And sure. this is another change they made to the M2 competition. It okay. is a different exhaust than you find on the regular M2. It works for me. Um, and I really, the last thing to talk about, the M differential, typical stuff. There's never a point where you're, you're at a loss for grip when you're pounding this thing. Even foot to the floor, you're going to go sideways, but it, it does help transfer the power where it needs to go. So it's a highlight of the car. And the pro drivers I've spoken to all speak very highly of how robust this M differential is. Okay. 
at SEMO almost a year ago. They pounded these cars around all day long, 24 hours, drifting them out front, and they didn't have any failures. Yeah, and so. it'll just leak like a sieve. <laughs> BMW problems. Uh, let's go take a look under the hood. Jack, we're looking at a German vehicle under the hood, and this is a true M motor, unlike the M2 before it. Yeah, this S55 that's in this M2 competition solves all of the problems I had with the regular M2. That car didn't feel special, this does. Yeah, and I will give you that. Uh, and it has this really nice fancy structural carbon fiber brace that connects the strut towers to the radiator support bracket. So what else did they do? So for all intents and purposes, this is the detuned M4 competition cooling and engine package. This makes about 50 less horsepower than the M4 Competition does, but it has all the fancy pants coolers. It has its two supplemental radiators and the lower grills. It has a larger kidney grill for its radiator itself and a oil cooler. All of this we mentioned below, but it's important to note. Yeah, and because this has the DCT dual clutch DSG, which is VW, but yeah, it's got a dual clutch trans and because of how high performance it is, they've chosen to cool it, which the manual transmission does not have a cooler because it doesn't need it. And having this out on track, uh, not this car, not the fundraiser car, but a press car, it was getting beat on all day. No check engine lights, no cooling issues, no overheating problems, no trans problems. So I'm really impressed with how much abuse that it can take. And just because it's detuned doesn't mean that it doesn't have the power because when you look at the weight distribution chart here it is less weight than like the m4 is the weight distribution cross weight is okay at 52 percent but the front to rear distribution is is quite good so when you drive it you don't notice the missing horsepower this is a new motor for a new car relatively new at least and i haven't heard too many horror stories about this motor and i think based on our experience at road america you know at least in the next four or five years you shouldn't have too many problems with this thing Tetsuya Tata was talking about this car when I did the Supra press launch and he made the point of saying that the more recent BMW engine packages, they've put a lot more effort into making them reliable. So, you know, this is kind of a proving ground for them. Obviously, as a new car, I'm super impressed with the performance. The engine, the transmission performance here is top, top notch but we can just talk about this all day or just take it for a drive and kind of show you why we think it's as good as it is. All right. I think it's time to set off in the M2 competition, Jack. Extra premium jiggle factor on my end. <laughs> I'm gonna start the, start this off by saying this is the best modern BMW M car I've ever driven. Oh, what makes you say that, Jack? It is the perfect blend of usable fun and sense of humor. It does have a pretty big sense of humor. I think a lot of it is because it feels lighter, it feels smaller, and it's fast. And it does what you want it to do when you're on an open road. The dual clutch transmission in here is, man, it's one of the best transmissions I've ever driven. Aside from like a supercar, of course, but it's even probably close to that. I like it because it's the right blend of fun and daily usability. Yeah, it is the right it's it is the right blend of fun. It's the first BMW M product that I've been in that doesn't feel like it's totally watered down. Yeah, this car I feel like the limits are high, but low enough you can still enjoy it on a tight, technical, twisty back road like this. Yeah, it, and that's true because there's an element of danger when you drive it. There is an element of you could potentially crash this car. It's not driving. It's not driving you. You're not just along for the ride like the M5 but, we just got out of. You literally could have a low driving skill and you'd be safe in that because of all the electronics and the way the car is set up. This, you can legitimately pitch sideways and it's still controllable, but it it's, it's so much more fun than any other BMW. And you can pitch it sideways without having to go 140 miles an hour. Yes. So, day to day just trying to putter around through towns you can you can make yourself smile 
it really doesn't take itself that seriously. It doesn't take itself seriously. And, and typically, these types of cars don't make me smile anymore. And you see when I drive them, I'm like stone cold. Yeah. And a lot of it is because I feel nothing. I feel no connection to the machine. And this M2 gives you some of it. It's not completely like it used to be, super visceral. But there's enough here in terms of the, a, a little bit of sideways, the rear wheel drive effect. It's extremely balanced. It doesn't ride horribly. And it is, um, the motor is really good. And this is one of the best transmissions, automated manuals, this dual clutch. You feel more involved in the experience, even though it's an automatic. And speaking of which, there is a manual option. And the manual option, while may not be as fast as this twin clutch, which everyone knows already, it's just nice that it's there. It, it would add another layer of driver involvement that this car is currently lacking. Three, three pedals normally is more fun in a slower car like this. It is, and I, when you say slow car, I think you've started to become poisoned by all the fast cars you've driven. This, to me, is a fast car. I feel like this is probably 50 to 65 horsepower more than probably what it should be, and it is. it feels so good. At zero to 60 is fast, zero to 100 is fast, and I feel that's why there's this element of danger there. There's more horsepower than most people are gonna be able to handle. But it's not so fast like the M5 competition where you're doing 130 miles an hour in like three seconds. It, agreed, yeah, it's it's not on that level clearly, but it's this is, you know, this is not some cheaper like entry level sports car. Even though you can drive it without a lot of skill, it still doesn't feel like that entry level sports car. Now. Let's, you know, th the best thing to do is just show you what it's like to just rip through some gears, listen to the engine, watch the transmission performance, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. that make this a great B-road stormer, however, does not exactly make for a great track car. No, and let me get into that. Um, so here's the deal. This car out of the box with the factory tuning of the suspension and the tires, it wants to go sideways anytime you're on the throttle. It throttle oversteers everywhere, which is what makes it so exciting to drive. But when you really want to put the hammer down to drive, with some finesse, you can't. You're constantly change, chasing the rear end on this car. And it's one of the things that I hated when we autocrossed it. It's one of the things that I didn't like on the track and I don't like it out here. Now, yes, you throw on a sticky set of like 200 tread wear tires or you know, track day tires and maybe make some tweaks. Maybe even just a front sway bar would fix this. But as it stands as a stock car, this wants to go sideways way more than I'd like. Which when I got into the Supra and the Z4, those cars had finesse. You could get them to rotate under braking. You didn't always have to be mashing on the throttle to get it to turn. It would rotate under braking. You had more control of the throttle in those cars that this doesn't have. I don't think it has the chassis that that new generation vehicle does, but that might be something you like. I do. I think with this car, if you made it a better track car, it would be a worse street car. You run into the same problem I have with my vet is that the limits are so high, I can never enjoy it on the street without, oh God, I'm gonna die horribly in an accident. And I think that's where they've done an extremely good job with this car, is they knew who was gonna be driving it and how people have fun with a vehicle like this. And a lot of it is just making the rear end go around in a safe manner or a ridiculous manner with that side. So, you know, it's something to note when we're talking about the technical details of driving it, so now you know. But I think the best thing to do is to head into the shop with the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the BMW M2 competition. Now, since this is a fundraiser car for Tri Industries and they've supplied it to us, 
If you appreciate this car, if you appreciate their cause in these videos, definitely donate to them to win this. And whether you do or not, here's the verdict. It doesn't matter who gets in this car. I think BMW and the M cars have started to get a reputation that they're soft, floaty, disconnected, and you get behind the wheel of this and it's insanely, you feel very connected to it. It's tail happy, you can have fun driving it, it's fast, it handles well. The dual clutch is insanely good, almost supercar levels are good, and you have a manual transmission option. The other huge pro is, let's be real, it's still in that affordable price range. Yes, $60,000 is a lot. As with any car, it's a lot of money, but this gives you such satisfaction driving it. You have to go at least 15 years back in the BMW world to get this level of driver involvement. Now here's the cons. This car tends to oversteer way too much. You're constantly chasing the ass end of it. Great on the street, not so great on the track or autocross. You're gonna have to do a little bit of adjustments if you're competitively driving it. The, other, the only other comparison I can make with this car is after driving the new Supra on the Z4, it's not as reactive to certain driving techniques to get it through corners. It doesn't trail brake as well as the Supra, the new platform. It doesn't react as well to steering and turning in. It just feels a little less disconnected than those cars. So I would say if you're looking for the M2 competition, get behind the wheel of the Z4 and the Supra before you side on the dotted line here. But other than that, this is a great car. I've really enjoyed driving it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Savage Geese, yet another notification. Do you know how rich I am? Are you not hearing me? We unfriend, we unsubscribe. Get it done. I'm rich. Why is this a problem? <laughs>